So I am back on the utility kitchen again. Now you might notice that I've now got a sink in place and I've cut my worktops, but I'm gonna skip ahead for a little bit and show you after cutting the worktops, I added some laminate trim. And I decided to follow my dad's method. It sounded easy and I had to ring him for some tips because there's almost nothing online about this and most people skim over it. But it is my second attempt but that's because I noticed that there's a manufacturer fault on the first trim that came with my worktop. So I was going to use a edging strip for this, but as soon as I opened the new one, it was perfect. I knew I had a perfect edge to follow without having to make two scissor cuts. So that is an option if you want to go for it. So anyway, keep on watching and I'll show you how I get on. So just to give you a quick lowdown, I only cut my worktops with a handsaw until I got to my sink but covered my laminate worktop with masking tape. I'm measuring up where I want to cut it and just used a fine tooth handsaw and started from the profile edge. I took my time and sawed in a downward fashion as it recommended on the instructions. And then removed the masking tape and went over it with a sanding block to take off any edges. Although my dad recommended a belt sander, but mine's a massive one that I thought it might actually do some damage. And this part is really important anyway, before you start gluing your edging to it. And I'll be using this contact adhesive, and as usual, I'll leave all the links below. So the first thing I'm doing is masking taping it up again. I also protected the rest of the worktop with cardboard. So then I got the pristine laminate edging and made sure the top of the trim lined up with the top of the worktop and lined up with the back. So once I trimmed it down with a pair of scissors, I temporarily attached it in place with a few bits of masking tape and make sure it's still lined up as you're going along. Then using a sharp pencil, I'm drawing around the excess bit at the back of the trim and I also repeated that for the bottom lip that was protruding as well. So I've removed it now and you can see my pencil line of exactly where I need to cut around it. And my tip for this is cut it slowly with some sharp scissors and cut as close to the pencil mark as you can on the outside, not the inside. You don't want to cut it too short. And you'll need to open a few windows for this because this contact adhesive stinks. I'm actually using a plastic filling knife for this. It did come with its own applicator, but it was curved and I really couldn't stand using it. So I just went for this one instead. You don't want any lumps to show through once you've put the edging in place. Also, it's quite tricky to not get glue on the other side of the trim, but you can just wipe it off quite easily if you get there quick enough. And then I repeated that gluing method on the cut edge of the laminate. And you're meant to leave it till it's touch dry within five to 10 minutes. And by the time I'd finished gluing the worktop anyway, it was ready to use straight away. So you've got to trust your own judgment. Bear in mind, as soon as you put it on, it's so sticky, you probably won't be able to move it. So make sure you take the time to line it up perfectly along the top and the sides. And then I'd apply some pressure with my hand or sometimes even an old rag and just firmly smooth over it. The other thing you'll notice is my dad specifically said not to use a Stanley knife. He uses a file instead. And I found just going over it on a 45 degree angle very slowly and carefully worked the best. And if I left too much lip on there and tried filing it straight away, it chipped more off than I wanted it to. And I would just take my time going all the way around or sometimes on the angle going side to side and definitely be careful around the curved edge as well. So for those who don't know, last week I was nominated for another blogging award. So if you haven't done it already, I would really appreciate it if you click the link below and just click the heart next to the carpenter's daughter to turn it red. That's all you need to do. But I've really enjoyed learning all these projects and sharing with everyone of how I get on. And hopefully I can keep inspiring more people to do DIY and learn new skills they might not realize they've got yet. I removed the masking tape and flipped it over to work on the bottom. I filed it down until I got it where I wanted it. But I've definitely learned you can't really rush this and overall, very happy with how this went. So now that's done, I'm gonna be plumbing up the sink, which I'm very excited about. I've already done the plumbing underneath. It's just sorting out the waste and hooking the mains up to the tap. So hopefully that goes well. And then over the next few weeks, I'll be showing you fitting the end panels, which I've already cut. I just need to access underneath here first before I can fix them finally. And then start thinking about tiling and stuff. So yeah, if you've got any tips of how you do it differently, because I'm just following my dad's method over the phone, he's not here to guide me, then feel free to comment below. 
even any tools that you'd use. And hopefully I'll see you in my next one. And don't forget to vote for me to win another blogging award. I'll leave a link for that below as well if you haven't already done it. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.